Let's say you're in a you're in a tower and all your clothes are on fire. You're you're burning up, you jump out the window. Chris's situation, I don't see it as being any different. Everybody that knew him liked him. In fact, when he, he was getting into this trouble, like nobody could believe it. He made friends easily, maintained friends long term, and those friends were with him right to the end. Chris went to prison, you know, on, on more than one occasion, but never committed any, any violent crime. It was typically property crime. I think his last conviction was a break and enter, and it was just basically to either feed his addiction or pay off debts from his addiction. Chris had been released early. He had, he had been released to a halfway house in Victoria. He was not happy there. We believe he, he left. He was in breach of probation. Somehow found himself back into the, the drug scene. The next thing we heard, he had actually uh, turned himself in. They skipped all the steps, and he was put right into solitary confinement for being in breach of probation. We had no idea how bad it was. He was telling me how, how it was so difficult to be in isolation and not have any human contact, and I remember that was one day that I might have had a really bad day at work, and I said, Chris, I could use a couple days like that, and I had no idea what I was saying. When, when you're in solitary confinement, you're basically in your cell for 23 out of 24 hours a day. You're given one hour to go into a small yard where you get natural light, but virtually no interaction with other human beings. I have never seen a solitary confinement cell, possibly in a, in a picture, but I'd never seen one before. And it, it just, ironically, it, it looks like something that doesn't belong in the free world. Days turned into weeks, turned into months. We had no idea what was going on um, with him, and I know we were starting to get concerned, and I even made comments to some of my friends. I said, I'm starting to get really worried about my son. They gave him a bunch of documents through his mail slot and asked him to sign. Not only was he leaving, but he's going to a maximum security institution, and he's gonna be put into solitary confinement in that institution. Chris had uh, what we believe was a, a panic attack. He boarded up his window. He, he basically lost, his, lost, lost control of himself mentally. Three hours later, he took his own life. As a parent, you go through a lot of um, a lot of different emotions. I can't explain it other than we are, we're more knowledgeable about it now, but unfortunately we paid the ultimate price for that knowledge. You have to communicate with other people, you have to have light, you have to have mental stimulus. These are all elements that are vital to our survival. Chris, he's in a little isolation cell virtually no communication with other human beings. It's torture. He feels that pain, so he, he could not tolerate that pain any longer. Uh, you know, we, we, we're, not, uh, we're not the Waltons, but we're certainly not bad people. I think that there's a lot of families out there that are just like us, that, that have gone through the same thing. I, I don't think drug addiction picks favorites. He was, he was a good guy. The help he needed was addiction help and mental illness help. And unfortunately, that's not what he got.